What's up everybody, welcome to my channel where we don't do and think like the average person out there. Now you might be just starting your investing journey and you're wondering what are the best stocks to buy and which stocks could give you the best returns. So before I answer those questions, let's look at these four investors. We have John, we have John Doe who is a doctor who is interested in growth stocks. Now we have Peter Griffin who works in the technology sector and loves dividend stocks. Now we have Mary Jane, who is a teacher who loves established companies. Now we have Bob Marley, the musician who has a low risk tolerance and doesn't like researching stocks. So he invests in ETFs, which pretty much grows up all the individual stocks together and reference them as one. So let's say you just start investing and you go to Jando and ask Jando, which stocks should you invest, invest in? Which stocks do you think Jando will tell you about? He will tell you about the growth stocks and he th because he think these growth, growth stocks are the best stock to invest in. But are those stocks necessarily for you? Um, what if you're like Jane who likes safer stocks? Then those stocks John Doe mentioned to you wouldn't suit your needs. But he's giving you a list of stocks that he believes are the best stocks out there. Now a lot of you guys are better stock pickers than you thought. All you have to do is start with 3 to 5 companies that you already know. But then again, you're going to say you don't really know any company. Who is the manufacturer of the phone that you are using? Checking your cowboy. Who produced those products that you are using? When you go to work, what are the software and products that you are using? Those are the questions you started to start selecting stocks. And then you select five of them and then you start your research there. So let's say you ask yourself those questions and you come up with say five stocks. And let for example Apple is one of them and you check Apple stock price and Apple stock price is $150 per share or whatever it is now maybe $170 per share. The first thing a person is going to say Apple is expensive. But when it comes on to investing in stocks you can't necessarily look at just the stock price alone and say it's expensive. You might have a female she takes up $10,000 do her makeup for a day then go home and wash it off. That's $10,000 down the drain just to look good for one day, right? Now, the same person is going to look at a stock like Apple for $170 per share or Grace Kennedy for $100 per share and say the stock is expensive when they just take $10,000 and just wash it down the drain, right? So, so if you can take $10,000, just wash it down the drain, then you can take $10,000 and buy some shares $400 per share. Now, if you want to get a better understanding of when a stock is really expensive or not, you have to start looking at the ratios like the PE ratios and the PB ratios. You can watch my investing basics playlist to get an understanding of that. I'll definitely leave a link to the PE ratio in the description below. And not because a stock is trading for like a dollar per share means it is cheap. A stock can move from a dollar to zero. Likewise, it can move from $20 per share to $200 per share. And you are saying the stock for $20 is ex was expensive. You can't just look at this price and say it's too expensive and you don't want to invest in that stock just because of the price. And before you take your hard-earned cash and invest in any of these companies, you have to take your time to understand the company that you're investing in. You can't take your money that you just earned and just go invest in a stock because it sounds like a good stock and you don't know anything about the company. You have to know how the company is generating revenue. What are the products and services they do offer? Are they investing in other companies? You have to understand these things before you invest your money. And remember, stocks are companies. So when you invest in a stock, you're buying a piece of company. So it is good to invest in companies that are making money. So you want to check like the last five years worth of financial data and see how that company has performed over the last five years. While per past performance don't necessarily indicate future performance, but that's a good place to start. If the company has been losing money consistently over the years, then that's a sign you might want to avoid investing in that stock. Now, if a company has been losing money for the past five years, is that a company that you want to invest your money into? So those kind of stocks, you want to avoid them when you're just starting out. And this one, a lot of you might experience it. If you work for a company, you want to understand the management if you can. 
because some management will definitely make decisions that will lose money so for example you know me as a bad manager right and i go and operate company x more than likely i'm going to make the same bad decisions in company x so if you have that information good you might want to avoid that company too the better the management the better the company will perform and make money and this will in turn grow the money that you invested and if you really want to build long-term wealth you have to invest in companies that are really growing right and you have to look at what the companies are doing to grow their business over the years and what are their future plans to grow their business even more in the future if the company is not growing and making more money you won't really see much appreciation in the stock price there won't be a lot of demand for that stock so just like when you're shopping online and you read the reviews for the product and if you're booking a hotel you read the reviews and see if it's a good hotel now you're going to start reading financial reports and annual reports to see if the company is a good company those are the things that you need to start reading before you make an investment and once you select three to five companies you're making your life a lot easier because remember guys these are businesses and if you own 10 business it is harder to manage than if you own three four or five companies so the less you have the better for you so you can make your life complicated or if you want or if you want you can always make it simple by going with a few stocks you can even look at the barrier to entry of the business that you are investing in right how easy it is for your next company to come and take this company out of business right you have to look at those things as well because the easier it is for a next company to, to come and take a share of the market that means it's the less profit that company will make in the future and less profit less demand for that stock and before you know it that business stop making money and another thing i want to touch on is investing in ipos when it comes down to investing in ipos there may be a lot of hype in the news sometime remember these guys are marketing a product they are selling a product to you it's like they want your money so they are going to do anything to sell this product to you so it's on you now to read the prospectus and come to a conclusion whether you want to invest in that company and the information will be there for you to make an informed decision and this is a mistake a lot of people make when they are just starting out they don't read the prospectus before investing their money and I did it and I know so that's why I'm telling you about it right you invest in a company that you don't know anything about you don't know how they make their money any at all you don't know if they were profitable in the past and what are their future projections you don't know anything like that what are the risks associated with the business you have to know those little things so that's where reading the prospectus come in very important and because it invested in an IPO that performed very well, that doesn't mean the next one is going to do the same thing. It might list for a dollar and then go to a dollar fifty. It can list for a dollar and then go to three dollars or four dollars. You have to understand the supply and demand and what company the problem is really solving. Is there a demand for this product? Is this company profitable? Will they be profitable in the future? You have to look at those things before you invest your money. A lot of people say investing is risky, but once you take the time out and learn, it gets a lot easier. And, and like I mentioned before, you can make it simple or complicated if you want. It's up to you. And this is how I personally look at risk when it comes down to investing and losing money. Right now, I'm comfortable taking up $1,000 and investing in Apple stock at $170 per share versus buying an iPhone for $1,000. The reason why I said this is because a lot of people don't look at risk when buying the phone. Like someone can just steal that phone. You might go on the road, you lost it. You might be just walking with your phone, talking on your phone. You drop your phone and break your phone screen. So in the first two scenarios, you would lose a hundred percent of your money. And if you break that screen, then you might have to find a good amount of money to replace that screen. So if let's say I invest a thousand dollars in Apple stock, right? For me to lose all of my money in Apple, Apple technically has to go to zero, it has to go bankrupt, it has to there has to be no more Apple, right? So it is it is harder for me to lose my money investing in a company like Apple when compared to 
buying the iPhone. That's why I look at it. So to answer which stocks are the best stocks to invest in right now, just get a sheet of paper and start writing down the five companies that come to your mind right now. Go on Google and start researching them. For international stocks, you can simply start with Yahoo Finance and for local stocks, like you can start with the Jamaica Stock Exchange, start reading the financial reports, start reading the company annual report. I like read any little thing in the business news. And on that note of news, it's sad to say that business news might be one of the most important news that is shown on your television. But guess what? A lot of people don't read or watch business news. They watch the value portion of the news, Lord God, a pay killing a go on, and then they come out of the business section, they skip it and go on and something else. And that's how the majority operate. So I hope this video does help you in selecting some of the best stocks to invest in. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.